Hello friends, welcome to another video of Zeta Axis and today we will discuss the process of formation of Himalayas. Now this whole lecture on the process of formation of Himalayas, we have divided it into three parts. In the first part, we will see how different parts of Himalayas were formed. How the Stethan Himalayas, Greater Himalayas, Lesser Himalayas and Siwaliks were formed. In the second part of the video, we will see that what are folds, how are these folds created in Himalayas and what are boundary folds which separate these different parts of Himalayas. And in the third part, we will see what are syntaxial bands and why Western Himalayas are wider than Eastern Himalayas. To understand the process of formation of Himalayas, it is important that you understand how different types of plate boundaries interact with each other. We have discussed this topic in detail in this video. So this video is kind of a pre prerequisite to understand the process of formation of Himalayas. We know that around 200 million years ago, all the continents were one continuous landform, which was called Pangaea. But slowly, due to the movement of plates, all these land masses got separated from each other. Our Indian plate, which was part of Gondwana land, also got separated from the Gondwana land and it started to move in the northern direction. This movement in the northern direction continued until our Indian plate collided with the Eurasian plate. And because of this collision, we see Himalayan mountains at the boundary of collision of our Indian plate and Eurasian plate. Now before going to the formation of Himalayas, let's try to understand what was the role of reunion hotspot in the process of formation of Himalayas. Reunion hotspot is a hotspot in our Indian Ocean lying over here. Now this hotspot was dormant for several million or thousands of years. Now as our Indian plate got separated from the African plate, uh, Antarctic plate and Australian plate, our Indian plate started to move in the northern direction. But as soon as our Indian plate came over this reunion hotspot, it became active. The reunion hotspot started to give out a lot of magma. And because of this magma coming out of the reunion hotspot, it melted away a large part of our Indian plate, therefore reducing the thickness of our Indian plate. We can see that here the thickness is this much, but after passing over the magma from this hotspot, the thickness is reduced. Now since the thickness is reduced, the weight of the Indian plate is also reduced. So after passing over the reunion hotspot, our Indian plate it started to move with a very high velocity. You can see that it started to move by 15 cm per year. And because of this, the collision was very forceful and it gave rise to the Himalayan mountains. So you can see that the reunion hotspot increased the velocity of our Indian plate by melting away a lot of mantle from our Indian plate, thus reducing the thickness of our Indian plate and increasing its velocity. Now here we can see the cross section of Eurasian plate, Indian plate and the Tethys Sea. Here there is asthenosphere and all these plates are moving over this asthenosphere. Now as our Indian plate was moving towards the Eurasian plate, some part of this Tethys ocean plate it was subducting and because of this subduction we see that the parts of the Eurasian plate were uplifted and this led to the formation of Tibetan plateau and we can see here that the Tibetan plateau was formed by the subduction of this Tethys ocean plate under the Eurasian plate. It was formed much before the process of collision started and it was formed from the part of Eurasian plate. Now we have already seen in our previous videos that at continent ocean boundary the oceanic plate will start to subduct because the oceanic plate is denser and therefore heavier. But this oceanic plate which is subducting has a lot of water in it and this water reduces the melting point of the rocks. Therefore, at the boundary we see that a lot of magma is formed because of the heat and pressure generated by subduction. This magma is hot and less denser. Therefore, it rises through the continental plate. You can see here that this magma is rising through the continental plate. Now, as this magma 
rises through the continental plate and it comes to the surface, it starts to form volcanic mountains. And a very similar thing occurred in the Himalayan region. We see that this Tethys ocean plate which was subducting, it created magma because this is also an oceanic plate. There is a lot of water in it and because of this water, the melting point of the rocks is reduced. Magma is produced. Now this magma is hot and less dense. Therefore, it will start to rise up. Slowly, this magma will rise through this overlying continental plate and it will reach the surface and at the surface it will form volcanic mountains. So we can see a chain of volcanic mountains all along the Eurasian plate boundary. And these mountains are what we call as Trans Himalayan mountains. So all our Trans Himalayan mountains are mostly volcanic in origin. The Karakoram mountains and the Ladakh mountains are example of the Trans Himalayan mountains which are volcanic in nature or which were having volcanic origin. Now here we can see that the Trans Himalayan mountains mainly have volcanic origin and there is large amount of batholith at their base. The Trans Himalayan mountains are made of granite which is an intrusive igneous rock as well as volcanic rocks. Karakoram mountains and Ladakh range is an example of this and also Kailas range is just an extension of Ladakh range. So here we can see that the Trans Himalayan ranges mainly have volcanic origins and there is large batholiths at their base. Now slowly as our Indian plate continued to move, the Tethys oceanic crust got squeezed between the continental plates of Eurasia and our Indian plate. And therefore, some part of this Tethys ocean plate was uplifted and it gave rise to the Tethian or Tibetan Himalayas. Now, in some books, the Trans Himalayan Mountains and Tethian Himalayan Mountains are together termed as Trans Himalayan Mountains. But both of them has different origin. You can see that the Trans Himalayan Mountains were having volcanic origin. They were formed from the rocks of this Eurasian plate while the Tethian Mountains are formed from the Tethian Ocean. And therefore, the origin of both these mountains are different. Now this Tethian or Tibetan Himalayas was formed by the Tethys Ocean Crust. Therefore, it has a lot of sedimentary rocks. Because in oceans, we find a lot of sedimentary rocks. Moreover, because the sedimentary rocks came from the ocean, it contained a lot of fossils of animals. Therefore, the Tethian Himalayas have a lot of fossils. So here we can see the characteristics of Tethian or Tibetan Himalayan mountains. They were formed by the upliftment of Tethys Ocean. A part of the Tethys Ocean crust was uplifted. Now they are mainly formed of metamorphosed sedimentary rocks. So these sedimentary rocks came from the oceanic crust of Tethys Ocean but during the process of elevation or upliftment they got metamorphosed. Now because these rocks were formed from the sedimentary rocks of ocean therefore they are rich in fossils. Jaskar mountain range is an example of the Tethian or Tibetan Himalayas. Now here you should see that this dark part is actually also a part of our Indian plate. This is the continental self of Indian plate. So our Indian plate actually extends till this part and this part is under the ocean. Now as the Indian plate moved in the northern direction, we saw that this continental self as well as some part of our Indian plate got uplifted and they formed greater Himalayas. Whenever there is folding, a four dip like this is created. This is for every layer of folding. So whenever there is a folding, we will see that such kind of groove is created in the plate in the region behind the folded part. This region is called four dip. Now here we saw that the greater Himalayas when uplifted included some part of our continental self. Now we know that the continental self is also rich in sedimentary rocks. Therefore, the greater Himalayas also contain large amount of sedimentary rocks. They also contain large amount of granitic rocks because it was formed from the Indian plate and Indian plate was mainly formed of granite. And therefore, we see that there are granitic rocks in the greater Himalayas. 
and because of the continental shelf and the sedimentary rocks from the continental shelf which formed part of greater himalayas we also see that large amount of fossils can be found in the greater himalayas the fossils are not as abundant as the tethian or tibetan himalayas but still we find large amount of fossils in greater himalayas here we can see the characteristics of greater himalayas so they were mainly formed from continental crust of indian plate so this was the first part of Himalayas which was uplifted from the Indian plate. Earlier we saw that the Trans Himalayas were part of Eurasian plate while the Tethian Himalayas were part of the Tethys ocean crust. So the Greater Himalayas is mainly composed of crystalline, igneous and metamorphic rocks. Now they are crystalline rocks because when this Him Greater Himalayas were uplifted there was large amount of pressure and temperature which caused crystallization of rocks. Similarly, this pressure and temperature also caused the metamorphic rocks. And some of the igneous rocks which intruded in the formation of Himalayas in the greater Himalaya part, they created igneous base. Now here we see that the metamorphic rocks can be granite, ceased and genesis. So the ceased is basically formed mainly from sedimentary rocks. And there are sedimentary rocks because the uplifted part included continental shelf. Remember the greater Himalayas are the first part to be uplifted from the Indian plate. So the margin of Indian plate that was the continental shelf which was uplifted to form this greater Himalaya. So it includes a lot of sedimentary rocks. And these sedimentary rocks also got metamorphosized because of the large amount of heat and pressure generated during the process of upliftment. A large amount of fossils can be formed and Mount Everest is a very good example of it where you can find marine fossils all around the Mount Everest. They also have granitic rocks. Why? Because the Indian plate was mainly formed of granite and the greater Himalayas were formed from the Indian plate. Therefore, they have a lot of granite. Granite is also formed by intrusing magma. So during the process of formation of Himalaya, some magma intruded this region. And when they cool down, they formed granite rocks, which are intrusive igneous rocks. Now here we can see that the Tethys ocean crust has completely subducted. Now the continental plate is subducting. And because this continental plate does not have a lot of moisture or water, so you can see that the supply of magma has stopped over here and there is no active volcanic activity going on. Now as this process of movement of Indian plate in the northern direction continued, we see that the compressive forces started to create the lesser Himalayas. So this lesser Himalayas were completely formed from the Indian plate. And here we can see the characteristics of lesser Himalayas. So they mainly consist of metamorphosed sedimentary rocks. So on the surface of the earth, there were many sedimentary rocks. Some sedimentary rocks came by the erosion of the greater Himalayas. And they also contain some amount of volcanic and granitic rocks. Obviously, some magma intruded in this region and it formed these volcanic and granitic rocks. Now, the sedimentary rocks of lesser Himalayas do not have fossils because when these lesser Himalayas were uplifted, there was not much or not abundant life forms in this region. And secondly, most of the rocks got metamorphosed. So the fossils got destroyed. Now, as this subduction continued, the compressive forces kept on acting on our Indian plate and they led to the formation of Siva Lake. The Siva Lake were mainly formed from the rocks which were eroded from the lesser Himalayas. And therefore, we see sedimentary rocks in Siva Lake. Now, when the Siva Lake were uplifted, there was large amount of life form in this region and there were a large number of mammals. So, we see evidences of mammal fossils in the Siva Lakes. Moreover, whenever there is a fold formed, we see that a foredip is formed in the area behind this folding region. This foredip is like a groove in our Indian plate. So, this was a foredip along the boundary of Siva Lakes. Later on, the erosion of Siva Lakes as well as the erosion of Peninsular region, it filled this part to form Indo, Gangtic and Brahmaputra plains. So here we can see how all these our Himalayas as well as Gangtic plains were formed. Now if we see the cross section of Himalayas from here, then it would look something like this. 
Here we can see the Trans Himalayas. This is the volcanic mountains which are formed along the boundary of Eurasian plate. Just after it, we have Indus, the Sangpo Suture Zone, or Indus Suture Zone. So in this zone, basically, our Indian plate it touches the Trans Himalayan plate. Now here we can see the Tethyan Himalayas. So you can see that basically the Tethyan Himalayas are lying over the Indian plate. The Indian plate goes below the Tethyan plate and it comes in contact with the Eurasian plate over here. And therefore this boundary is called in the, the Sangpo Sutura. And here is the Tethyan Himalayas. Here we see the Greater Himalayas and the Lesser Himalayas and the Siwaliks. We can see that the Tethyan Himalayas and Greater Himalayas are much wider compared to Lesser Himalayas and Siwaliks. Here we can see the characteristics of Siwaliks. The Siwaliks were formed by sandstone and mudstone set from the Himalayas. So as we have discussed that with the upliftment of lesser Himalayas, there were rivers which eroded the lesser Himalayas and brought the sediments and they deposited over here. And this region when got uplifted, it included all those sandstone and mudstone which were brought by the erosion of lesser Himalayas. And these rocks have lot of fossils of mammals because when they were uplifted, there were a lot of mammals in this region. So far we have seen the cross section of Himalayas. Now we will see the top view or we will try to understand how these different regions are spread along the boundaries of Indian plate and Eurasian plate. So here you can see that when the Indian plate came close to the Eurasian plate, the Tethian ocean plate, it started to subduct under the Eurasian plate and it formed the Tibetan plateau. Slowly, this process of subduction continued and we see formation of volcanic mountains all along the border of the Eurasian plate. And these are our Trans Himalayan mountains. Further, we see that this process of subduction continued and we see that the Tethys Ocean crust, it uplifted to form the Tethian or Tibetan Himalayas. Now, our Indian plate, it went below the Tethian Himalayas and came in contact with the Eurasian plate. So this region where the Indian plate comes in contact with the Eurasian plate is called in the suture zone or in the Sangpo suture zone. Further, when this process continued, we see that the Indian plate part started to uplift and we got our greater Himalayas. So you can see that both Tethian Himalayas and greater Himalayas are much wider. The process of compression further acted and this led to the formation of Lesser Himalayas and you can see the distribution of Lesser Himalayas from Pakistan to Myanmar. Finally, in the last part we see that there was a formation of Siwaliks in the southern direction of the Lesser Himalayas and both these Lesser Himalayas and Siwaliks are relatively thinner compared to Greater Himalayas and Tethian Himalayas. Lastly, because of the sediments which were deposited from the Lesser Himalayas as well as from the peninsula, we see formation of Gangetic Plains. And here we have already discussed that there was a 4D form. So whenever a folding occurs, at the back end of this folding in the plate, we see a groove-like structure which is called 4D. So these deposition in the 4D created the Gangetic Plains. Thanks for watching the video and if you liked our video then do subscribe to our channel and if you like the content we are creating and you want to contribute then you can use the QR code shared in the video.